everyone. I'm heading into Black Rock for a hike and first I have to thread the needle. Doesn't this look like fun? This was built because there are three residents on the other side of this tunnel and the tunnel goes under US Route 9W. And I think it was about 20 years ago they were going to fill it in. Uh, there is another access for these houses but um, they uh, they really couldn't do that legally so the tunnel was falling apart it was a square shape and then they refurbished it with the corrugated metal that you see here so there we go <laughs> the juncos are back they call them dark-eyed juncos now, but back in the day when I was learning about birds, they called them the slate-colored junco, but now I think they've separated that into yeah, another another species of that bird. I don't know if you can, I think you can see them flitting around. But that's a real winter bird. They go north in the summer because it's too warm here. Geez, where they all go? There's so many of them just now. Well, maybe I'll see some more. I'll get some better shots. But boy, isn't this pretty? I love hiking in the rain. Look at that. I love hiking in the rain because, uh, especially in the fall. Oh, and there's a rufous-sided towhee, which is now called the Eastern Towhee. I kind of like the rufous name. Rufous applies to the color under its, uh, its tail. But I like hiking in the rain because you get such vivid, rich color when everything is wet. Here's our first view on the trail out of the parking lot. That's looking at Frog Hill to the left, straight ahead, down in the hole there. Uh, let's say right about there. That's Route 9W. Heading north to Kingston and Albany. And uh, straight ahead there under the cloud cover is the Schwangunk Mountains. On a clearer day, you can definitely see them. Schwangunk Mountains are in Ulster County, New Paltz, Gardner area. Here's a nice view of Black Rock proper. And the reason they called it Black Rock is because back during the Revolution, they used the top of that mountain for beacons. And they burned a lot of wood up there. And the rocks in some areas and cracks and crevices are still black from the char. So a little history about Black Rock. It started as a farming community back before the Revolution. The three main families were the Skinners, Babcocks, and Chatfields. And they had lumber industry up here. And they had some apple orchards. And of course they, they hunted, trapped, and fished. Um, after that, Dr. Ernest Stillman had bought the land after the families faded out. And he bought up most of Cornwall, actually. But what he did... For the people who lived here was he built a reservoir system state-of-the-art reservoir system before the turn of the last century and uh, he also built the hospital in town for the residents very generous uh, he was a harvard graduate so when he died he willed black rock forest to harvard well around about the 1990s harvard lost interest and the Goldens, Mr. and Mrs. Golden, bought Black Rock. Now, Black Rock is not a park. It's always been private. But it's not private property. Um, Stillman had put it in his will and his trust that the people of, of Cornwall and Cornwall and Hudson, or anybody actually for that matter, uh, had the right to hike here at well. So there are no services here, like you would see in a, in a state park. You're on your own. No bathrooms. No garbage pickup. 
and no no dog poop removal either. <laughs> Busy, busy today. It looks like the new forest manager who took over two years ago for his father, who was first the assistant manager of Black Rock back then. I think he came in 78, 79. That was when I met him. Known him ever since. Good people. The only thing is. Uh, like a lot of places, Black Rock has lost its, you know, grassroots appeal with the community feel. And it sort of became corporate when the son took over. He's trying to run it like a park. And you can't do it because basically, this is a science lab. The Black Rock Consortium consists of many universities, for instance, Columbia, Cornell, different colleges, a lot of the area schools for their grammar school programs. And if you're going to run it like a park, you have to have the right size workforce. And a place like this relies on donations. It's not like state land or county land where taxpayer money takes care of all the maintenance. So he's kind of treading a a thin line there, and uh, I'm hoping Black Rock will maybe get back to the old school style, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Look at how gorgeous that is. It's a joy to finally see some water in the streams. It's been so dry. I think for a good month and a half, or two months. That's nice to see. We need a lot of rain. And it looks like today is going to be a good, solid, steady rain. Looks like a great place for coyotes and bobcat, doesn't it? I love rocky outcrops. They hold a lot of mystery. This conglomerate rock up here that you see right there that we're approaching. It's very interesting. I never spent a lot of time learning about it, but the former Black Rock uh, forest manager, who is now the forest historian, um, told me that pretty much every plant in the forest also grows on this rock. <clears throat> I, I'd have to learn a little bit more about it. But right here, we're looking at Solomon's seal. That's a broadleaf sedge. That's probably a narrow leaf sedge. Um, I'm not so sure if that's true because we have orchids here. There's something I'd have to identify. Oh, I know, I know what that is, but I can't think of it. But this rock is special because of that. It's got all kinds of plants growing on it. That's early meadow rue. Pretty neat. Been here since the beginning of time. Now, I don't have time to do it today because I have about a half day of work and that's why I'm up here now. But uh, I mentioned the Revolutionary War uh, with um, the history of Black Rock. And uh, if you look on a map, if you plan to come to hike and you look on a map and you see the Continental Road, well, that's very, very close to the truth. Uh, it's the road that's there now was rebuilt I think probably 75 80 years ago for easier access for the loggers but it's along the road there is a rock and I'll, I'll do a video on that sometime where they believe a young soldier was stationed up here and he carved into the rock a verse from the Bible probably because he wasn't sure if he was going to see his family again. Um, this was pretty remote up here, from what I understand, during the Revolution. But the original Continental Road, which is what I would like to make a video of when the leads come down especially, and the deer hunting is over with, um, 
the Black Rock Fish and Game Club is grandfathered in here. Uh, have been for years, and uh, I'm glad that they still are. They're allowed to hunt here if you're a club member. But they, uh, yeah, once they're done with their deer season, I don't want to bother them. Um, I'd like to uh, take you up on the real Continental Road, which is not the straight road that you see on the map. It actually snakes its way through the mountain. And uh, they've done a, a couple of surveys on that with uh, metal detectors, um, you know, find buttons, things like that, but I haven't heard too much about it. So I'd like to go up and do a little rooting around. And it's, it's really cool because, I mean, you're walking in the footsteps of history. Are these juncos? Yes. More juncos hanging out with field sparrows. That's cool. There used to be a grist mill right here, owned by the Maley family. So about four or five years ago, they put up a bridge in honor of the family. There's a, that's a new pipeline for the reservoir system. The old one had a walkway over the top. And now I see they have a keep off sign down there. Boy, they just take the fun out of everything. Which hazel is in bloom. And you can smell it all through the forest. It has a very astringent odor to it. And here is the very charming deer check station where the Black Rock Club members and their guests. And it's such a raw, cold day today that uh, <laughs> I'm real tempted to build a fire in here. It's pretty cozy. But... The old forage manager. Oh, they put a lock on it. Looks like a son put a lock on it. Used to be able to just go right in. And there is a a lovely wood burning stove in there, but uh, we can't use that as a refuge anymore. Oh well. Times they are a changing, and it's not always pleasant. But anyhow, to finish things up, this is the upper reservoir. There are, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, five reservoirs in Black Rock. Six, I think, if you count Jim's Pond. Um, and there's one natural lake called Sutherland, which is full of minerals. And it's a great place to swim. Not such a great place to fish because of the, uh, all the pickerel that's in there. They pretty much eat everything in sight. But look at that. I'm facing uh, east, looking towards um, uh, Carmel, New York, way, way out in the distance, and then eventually Connecticut, just to give you a bearing. And this is facing south. Gee, that's too bad. Put a lock on there. Hmm. The rebel in me wants to get my bowl cutters. <laughs> this is a great place to fish. Lots of bass up here. Um, you're not, you're not restricted from fishing here, but if you have a New York state license, if the water department comes up, which they normally only do on the weekends, they'll probably just not bother you as long as you have a license, but yeah, so here we are in Black Rock. Okay, everybody, thanks for coming along with me. I'm Irene from the Field Guide, and please like, share, comment. And subscribe, if you please. And I'll see you again. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.